finish up the warm up today, you guys are gonna do ISO, half kneeling psoas holds. So when you guys are doing this, it's basically a great way to kind of activate in range for the hip that's down in extension, but then the hip that's up, or the leg that's up is gonna be in range flexion, right? So this is more of an activation drill, but also mobility in itself, right? So all you guys are gonna do is five up, max tension, you're pushing as hard as you can into the floor, lifting that knee and driving that knee down, five seconds down. And you're gonna do a minute of that. Five on, five off, switch legs, a minute of that as well. And that's the end of the one. start with single leg glute bridges here when you guys are doing this remember this is for stability and once again end range work for the glutes so when you guys are doing this bring your feet relatively close to each other lift one off so I'm gonna stay in flexion on that opposite hip drive up squeeze the glutes hold the end range for two seconds and then come right back down if you look at my spine my spine is in a fixed position right the glutes and the hamstrings do all the work everything else remains nice and tight Nice and stable, right? So as that head comes down, hips come up, hips come down, it comes up. And we're gonna go two sets of eight per side with the two second pause. Second part of reset, you guys are gonna do kettlebell snatches and kettlebell windmills. The snatches are gonna be six, and then on that sixth rep, you're gonna hold it up, and you're gonna go into three windmills. So when you guys are doing the kettlebell snatch, remember when you're lining up for that first pull, bell needs to be in front, pull the bell all the way back to the cross, drive through the legs and the hips, Turn over, punch, and then cycle right back into your hips. You're not resetting from the floor. You're doing your first rep from the floor, then cycle the next five. Once you get that six rep, all the way to the top, turn out that outside foot that's unloaded. Load majority of your weight onto the foot that you have the weight on, and then come right back. And you're trying to send the butt as back as far as you can as you're going into rotation, and you're keeping your eyes on the bell and keeping your core as tight as you can, that's gonna be three. New exercise alert, we're doing clean pulls from the block. So we wanted to do something more hinge focused for today, um, but we didn't want to do it from the floor because 90% of you don't have the ability to actually do that safely. So obviously raising the floor is an easy way to do it. But having a high jerk block, is gonna almost make this too easy for the size jerk block that we do have. So what we decided to go with is that clean pull. So a clean pull is literally just a deadlift. So you're finishing that extension from the hips and the legs. And then you're going on your toes into a shrug because that would be kind of the second or the, the second pull of the clean. So these are called clean pulls. Think of like a deadlift with a really explosive from the feet and the shoulders shrug so you get really extended and elevated. So from here, and all we're gonna do is we're gonna go four sets of five. Alright, second exercise for strength is gonna be a lap pull down on the rope. We're choosing this because we want to do something posterior, but we also don't want to do anything that's gonna to be too grip intensive since you guys are gonna be doing clean pulls already. So when you guys are doing this, remember your position with your torso, slightly bent, flexed at the hips and back is straight. Arms are straight, you're not thinking about pulling towards the body, you're thinking about pulling down to the floor, letting that arm naturally come back and then opening up the chest at the very end, right? So we're gonna go four sets of 10, with a two second pause at the end. So from here, Second strength part today, you're gonna to go barbell RDLs with elevated um, 
lateral lunges. When you guys are doing this, remember the RDL is a hip hinge movement. It is not like a normal deadlift for the bottom half. Your legs are doing the work. So when you guys unwrap with the barbell, keeping it as tight as possible to your body, just like you're doing the lat pullouts, you're gonna send your butt back as far as you can, like you're trying to stick your butt out, and then on the way down, you're trying to get your chest and your head to be looking directly at the floor. Knees are always unlocked. They're never completely extended, but they're also not moving. They're not gonna continue to bend throughout this range. This is all hips, hamstrings, glutes, do all the work here, right? When you guys think about weight distribution on the foot, don't send the weight back to the heel. Try to still feel the forward through that big toe, so this way your body still has that stability it's looking for, okay? Second exercise you're pairing with, goblet positions. You guys are gonna grab a dumbbell or kettlebell of choice. You guys are gonna grab a plate, that's with the plate that you're gonna be stepping onto. When you guys take that step, remember you're in a front rack position, you take that step on the plate, you send your hips back, not your knees forward. So instead of us seeing the knees come forward to you staying upright, you're stepping on, loading up the hips backwards. So I'm still kind of halfway in between a squat motion and a hinge motion when you think about the hip and knee action, right? The knees will naturally come a little bit forward, but we're trying to keep all the emphasis onto the hips. And you're gonna go 12 per leg per set, four total sets.